Just got my wetsuit on, got my double hose regulator, so let's enjoy a scuba video, shall we? Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to scuba. Not just any type of scuba. Vintage scuba. This is our vintage diver, Mike. Say hello to the folks watching on the internet, Mike. Located in Indianapolis, Indiana, this scuba museum has a huge collection of vintage dive gear. Now let's take a step back in time. Hey, I remember this. Thunderball. That is G.I. Joe. God, I remember that as a kid. <laughs> I remember that as a kid. Yeah. Um, those are some nasty looking dive knives. Those are, wow, I never realized that they were going yeah. to be. When Noka had a dive ser a series of dive knives that uh -huh. came out. And, and you've actually got a set of coins here too. Those are fundraisers for Historical Diving Society. I try to okay. do my part to help support them a little bit. That is so cool. When you When you do that, do you use a watch at all to, to um, measure out your time? A lot of times I'll have a watch and just kind of tuck it underneath the wetsuit. Okay. Now do you do you guys log the number of dives or how long? Yeah. Or is there... Yeah, most divers will keep a log book and uh, that shows that you've been active also as far as a lot of times when you go places they'll ask you when the last time you dove. Mm -hmm. And if it's been more than a year they really recommend a refresher course just to get you comfortable again. Right. Um, the logbook uh, goes as proof uh, and you usually have your dive buddy sign off that yeah you did this dive at, at uh, Hidden Paradise and went down to right. 22 foot and you stayed there for 47 minutes. and uh -huh. All around are memories of the past. Old TV shows that made the ocean exciting and mysterious. off with some of the early aqualung single hose, the aquamatic, uh, right. and then the regular aqualung is what they call that, and then the calypso. Calypso mm -hmm. had a dull finish, and then they had a chrome version finish. Uh, about 1960, the aqualung deluxe came out, okay. where they actually built a mouthpiece that held a snorkel also, hmm. and had a valve here, so you could go from breathing air from your tank uh -huh. to surface supply through the snorkel. So, this particular red wetsuit over here, this is like an old 70s? 70s? Yeah, that would date back 70s. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the time, they, this was probably designed for water rescue team. Okay. Surprisingly, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Let's take a listen, shall we? Like preference because obviously that is a spear gun. Yeah, that um, was uh, vintage early 60s uh, called the Dolphin Diver. Now let's look at a modern scooter courtesy of the Maui Dream Divers. Very nice. Okay, now you're just being silly. I couldn't agree with you more, Mike. Now Carl will explain how the use of fins by scuba divers have changed over the years. Go ahead, Carl. We're all listening. Alright, here's uh, some examples of fins from... The Churchill came out in the late 40s. Which is the green one we're looking uh, at right here. the green one. Very flexible. Mm -hmm. um, very common fin. Used it for diving and the surfers then liked it because it was a nice short fin that they could use on their surfboards, bo boogie boards and surfboards. Okay. Um, the Voigt Viking A6 has been around since the late 50s. Mm -hmm. um, it's a medium large fin so it would fit size 10 or 11 foot no problem. 
and then you have the modern size fins which are going to provide you a ton more power right and uh, that's basically why in the old days you saw them swimming with their hands right a lot more because be they just had added, such added a small power. fin on their foot versus today's modern gear that uses this great big fin and i mean obviously the like some of the fins i mean that one has like a little I don't know, bump in the, in the middle of it yeah, and stuff the, like that. Yeah, it's a channel technology that they've created to what happens is with this fin. Mm -hmm. When you kick it, it turns into a giant scoop. Okay. So it's a very, very powerful and efficient fin in the water versus something like this that's just a blade. Right. And you're, it just kind of... It doesn't do it It's kind of like a paddle. Right. So, if you want to see an awesome collection of dive knives, single hose regulators, double hose regulators, and even catch a sneak peek at an old Sea Hunt episode starring Lloyd Bridges. From this angle of flight, I knew that it hadn't come from above, but from where? I had to find out. This spear might have some buddies. The Scooby Museum is the way to go. Or if you're like me, and you want to take a walk down memory lane, Or you could be like my friend Mike here, who has a passion for diving in vintage gear. There's something for everybody here at the Scuba Museum. Be it spear guns, snorkels, wetsuits, or what have you. You'll always find it here. I'm Mark Stice and the only thing I can say is This is cool. <laughs> this is really cool.